That's a yes. <laughs> Councilman Phillips. Here. And Councilman Casella. Here. And Supervisor Thurston. Here. Everyone please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay. So the first item is to adopt the agenda. Does anybody uh, have any other comments to it? If not, I have a motion. Make a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll second it. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The nays are abstentions. See that motion passed. Uh, the next item is to acknowledge the minutes of the October 1st of the October 25th, 2021 meeting. Do I have a motion? Make that motion. Second. Okay, motion and second uh, on October 25th, 2021 meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Uh, seeing none, uh, the motion passed. Next item is a motion to acknowledge the minutes of the November 4th, 2021 meeting. Do I have a motion, please? Uh, I want to make one change to that, please. Okay. So, sorry, Joe. So if you look at the adjournment, uh, I think we need to make a change on that. It says that uh, William Beal uh, moved that. Actually, Bill was not here. It was Angel. So we need to, uh, to make that uh, change, Joe? Yeah. He made the changes. Yeah. Okay. But for the record, the change has been made, correct, Joe? Yes. To uh, and Councilwoman Bettina, I believe, was the one okay. that made the motion. Just want to make sure. Cause <laughs> Thank <of> you. <laughs> okay. We actually do read your minutes. So, as amended, do I have a motion to acknowledge? I'll make a motion to accept. Okay. Second. Uh, motion second. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. Since we have a busy meeting tonight, uh, especially to deal with budget <coughs> issues, I'll <laughs> forego my comments. So, right now, we have a motion to open the public portion of the I'll meeting. I'll make a motion to open second. the public portion. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. So, uh, if there's anyone that has comments they'd like to make concerning uh, items on the agenda, please come up and identify yourself. Yes, please come up. Come on down. Good evening. My name is Grace Martin. I live at 52 Fieldstone Loop in Carpenters. Um, I have two things I'd like to ask the board. The first is on number of 2021-149, the adoption of the annual budget. Um, I was here last two weeks ago, and you all gave me wonderful attention on that. Um, I'm here to talk about the senior part just one more time. Uh, first, I want to thank Councilman Beal and Councilman Casella uh, for staying with me and a, another senior after the veterans thing, and we showed you the beautification projects that the seniors are trying to do around the front of the building on the Garden Club. So with that, I know, you're I know you're trying to do the annual budget. Um, will there be a line item for the garden club? <coughs> so, so I think that's something we're gonna discuss, but okay. that's certainly uh, something we're looking at today. Okay. Um, you know, we, we talked about that when we met with you, and uh, certainly that's something we are seriously considering. And again, you'll see that later on tonight. I don't wanna make comments before oh, no, my other okay. no, council members fair. get to see some of the changes we're gonna no, make. That's fair, because in the past, you know, the supervisor has been very generous with some of the things he's given the seniors. So, so. I think you'll be happy tonight. Okay, uh, one last item that I wanna talk about is 2021-150. It talks about the resolution to authorize transfer of funds. Which funds are being transferred? Is that just your normal business? You're transferring? So, so it's, I'll take this one. So it's normal business. Basically what happens is we have some overruns and some line items, and what we have is some fund balance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at each one of those individually. Uh, we'll see where it's appropriate to move money, and we'll move money from, again, a fund balance over to these you know, various uh, overcommits. It happens a lot. We do this. Sometimes it's a line item. So the overall budget may be fine, but the line item might be over. So if that's the case, um, we'll go ahead and make those adjustments, and right, we so have that, a list of that, those. That's for the current budget. That's for the current correct. budget. That's so correct. Correct. Do with the yes. None. Okay. No. Great. Thank you very much okay. for your attention. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, Frederick will be making some proposals, and we have a couple of the department heads here, you know, tonight that will support those, sure. you know, proposals as necessary. So, a any other comments? <clears throat> well, please identify yourself. I'm Marcy Wagman. I live at 50 Old Shore Road. So we discussed the resolution for adopting the negative declaration for a local law number or whatever, for amending the uses for the zoning code 
and the Conservation Commercial District and Conservation Office Park District um, at several um, meetings ago. So I understand the individual requirement and I have no issue with that. And that's about 1.22 acres of the about 300, or I guess between two and 300 acres that this change would affect. So I don't understand why the response to one person asking to have the change um, to residents is requiring us to change about 300 acres worth of property. Um, and then when I went through the negative, um, the, the, what do we call it, the full environmental assessment form, um, I guess the assumption is that residential use is a much less impact than commercial. But I would argue that it's not less or whatever, but it's different and that this form needs to be filled out more completely using some assumptions. For example, I think water use would be very different. I think traffic pattern use with if residents were put in those 300 acres would be very different. Um, that we ought to plan all of that stuff ahead of time. I also think the community service would be very different, schools, um, um, public protection would be different for commercial versus residential. So I think those, that information needs to be, you know, some assumptions need to be made. We need to kind of plan that out because I'm really very concerned about unintended consequences down the road of making those changes and not having thought through and, and considered all those implications. I, I don't think you can just say because it's residents, it's not as impactful as commercial, so therefore there's no environmental impact. So I would please ask that we go back and reevaluate that and use some of the resources to kind of think through what it would mean to put in 50, 100 additional homes in these areas. Okay. Thanks for your comments. I'll Thank take you. it under Thank consideration. You. Supervisor Ruggiero, welcome. Thank you. Congratulations to the board on your recent re-election. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I Thank know you. how that feels. Um, I would like to um, echo the comments just presented regarding the Conservation um, Commercial District. You know, the Conservation Commercial District was established in the 80s to protect certain areas of the town where the property surrounding that uh, land that could be developed needed to be protected, whether it be wetlands and other uses. So back in the 80s, the board was very wise and the plan was developed to allow some sort of accommodation, some sort of development, and they created this non-residential zone. Now, I do understand the application before the town in consideration of the property on Myers Corners Road, which was a residential house. Um, when that home was built, it was, it's beautiful. And unfortunately, um, in the early years of that home being built, it flooded from the, the right to the, the ceiling of the basement, mm -hmm. and it sat empty. And I know recently, in the last couple of years, the board um, chose to allow it to go to commercial to get some sort of you know use out of the property. And now they're seeking to go back to residential. Sure. Again, um, one could argue that the property on Myers Corners Road in that proximity would make a good light commercial property. I don't have a problem with that spot zoning you did then, and now if you want to go back the other way, that's fine. But to echo uh, what our neighbor just said here, this law now, as you're proposing it, is amending hundreds of acres to allow residential use in a commercial zone. Residential use homes along with accessory apartments on those homes. That's a major impact, and it's a major change, and I really am opposed to this change. I'm getting concerned with the type of zoning change that are being put through in recent years. Um, I've spent many Monday evenings, 14 years sitting where you sat, missing a lot of good TV um, over the years to kind of sit over <laughs> our, our town's ordinances. But let's face it, your biggest role in protecting our public health and safety is also to protect our property values. And the impact these zoning changes are having do have unintended consequences. And I, I also agree that residential is not the most benign use of our 
uh, property zones, right? There's a lot of use, uh, fertilizer, lawns, water needs, sewer needs. And like commercial offices, whether it's an attorney's office, or accounting office, or whatever's being put, could have been put in this one home would have been fine. And even making it going back to residential would be fine, because that was the intent when it was originally built. But the conservation com commercial property here, it does allow a residential use only if the property was built prior to 1962, 3,000 square feet or greater, and allowed it because that predated zoning law. And changing the essence of our commercial properties to have a residential element is too much of blurring the lines. Again, uh, I know you, the controversy over the use of the gas station. It was never about a gas station. Not one more gas station is gonna break the town. But what happened was, we rolled back the residential protections. Not only did we allow more of the proliferation of gas stations to topple, uh, be on top of one another, we waived the quarter mile rule. That was to allow businesses to have a fair sense of competition instead of frustrating businesses side by side, and that made bad zoning over the decades. Both sides of the aisle protected that. But then we also allowed a residential aspect on what I would argue is one of the most sensitive type of <laughs> projects, a gas station. We have for decades in this town been dealing with environmental contaminations because of gas stations. When I was supervisor, I had to sue the oil industry because the defunct gas station across from where it used to be 7-Eleven, there was two gas stations there in the early 70s. And we had a plume that went all the way over into Mr. Beale's uh, ward over there in Indian Village that contaminated their water supply. We had an MTBE contamination. And we had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring them fresh water. Recently I read that there was a zoning amendment in the last couple of years that talked about go-karts in the title, but then it rezoned acres and acres of property from one acre to two acre to R15, which is like Levittown sized lots. And with the proliferation of water and sewer that may be coming, we're overdeveloping and we're getting out of proportion with the planning. So I, I do oppose this law as drafted. I don't mind the warehouse being added to Lairdall. I think that's a good use of uh, that property and that's in this law. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind this property going back to residential. But to add hundreds of acres to make development in Ward 4 and Ward 2 on Route 376 and on Route 90 occur in some of the most environmentally sensitive areas of the town isn't wise, isn't good planning, and it's not good lawmaking. So I would ask the board to can this legislation tonight, rewrite it, and bring that property back on Myers Corners Road to what the owner asked for and do the rezone at Laurel. But the bigger smirch on the, on the map has to be fixed. Because this law is coming in without the revision of a master plan because we're adding a use to an existing one. So it's kind of slipping it in. I'm not saying there's chicanery here, but the process is not good planning, good zoning, or good lawmaking. So I would ask the board to pull this legislation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other comments, please? Tonight's your night for supervisors. <laughs> Hi, I'm Barbara Gutzler, 5 Russet Lane, Wappingers Falls. I'm going to start out saying something very nice about all of you. Congratulations yeah, thank you. on your reelection, and I wish you all the very best in uh, your goals for uh, the next two years. I really do believe that we are in good hands. Uh, regarding the same uh, legislation that has been addressed, I echo the same comments as Mrs. Wackman and Supervisor Ruggiero. Please revisit this legislation. I don't think it is a good idea at all for uh, changing things around, uh, changing the, uh, the zoning map for the purpose of one property, which is uh, you know, what we did uh, in my administration years ago. It's fine to bring that one house back to residential, but I do not believe this warrants an entire rezoning. When I look at this uh, and I see the possibility of development on Route 9D, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking about sensitive environmental areas, areas that are wetlands, 
What are we going to do for water supply, for sewage? Is there going to be septic systems there? There is just so much, so many what ifs, that I really do believe we need, or you folks, you good people here, do need to revisit this law and rethink it. Therefore, I would urge you to table this, to go back, look at things, uh, go through the, the uh, potential environmental factors, which, you know, in my opinion, uh, need to be looked at and restudied. Uh, I, I recall in my administration working with uh, county planning to try to do something about revitalizing the Houstonville Hamlet. When I left office, I left an entire box full of plans of potential redevelopment, not only of uh, Houstonville, but of uh, the Route 9 and potential development on 9D. And super, uh, su I'm calling you supervisor, I'm promoting you. Our town clerk here remembers my walking in with a hand truck full of boxes and saying, Joe, I have no idea who's coming into this office next, so we're gonna put them in your vault. And I know you did take very good care of them, but somehow between your administration, Supervisor Thurston, and mine, those plans disappeared. Correct. I have no idea what happened to them, but I'll tell you, the plans for Houstonville did not include anything like a gas station that nobody needed and nobody wanted. Bottom line here is we can't afford to make the same mistake. Please, please, I urge you, table this, take this under consideration, and reconsider the environmental impact on the town and also the economic impact on that. Thank you for your attention. And again, you. I wish you the very best in your Thank next you. two years. Thank you for your comments. Oh, and you too, Joe, on your re-election. <laughs> any other comments on any item? Hi, uh, Patrick Farley. I actually own the property at 26 Myers, uh, so I thought it'd be smart to at least come up and uh, share uh, maybe some uh, alternate opinion on it. Um, I will, uh, first of all, thank the board uh, back seven, eight years ago, and, and again, uh, for now, for considering the change back. Times, you know, certainly have changed, and uh, I guess one could argue it had to do with the pandemic, but it seems that uh, the pandemic has pushed forth a lot of technology and work from home and changes and things like that that are probably going to be with us for some time that might have taken years to get to this point have, have now brought us here. Um, I can just offer that, you know, I had the property up for sale as commercial uh, for over a year and had not received any uh, commercial offers. I do think there's a change in the, in the area here and the, uh, the need for more residential uh, space is clearly, you know, evident. And um, so I, I, on the other hand, of you know, uh, respecting my neighbor's opinions that we just heard, uh, commend the board on being progressive and, and, and the thinking here. Uh, because clearly there's a larger need for residential than commercial right now, and, and we're self-satisfied that. I can just tell you that I've received three uh, different, you know, very serious interests and offers uh, on the residential side. Um, and, of course, uh, the one couple, Patton and uh, Buckley, are here uh, this evening that are, you know, hoping to close and move in shortly. But um, I just share that, that I think there's been a change, and I commend it, the way that you are taking that into consideration. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? For the board? On any topic that's before the board tonight? I make a motion to close the hearing. Okay. I'll second. <coughs> motion and second to uh, close the public portion of the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> any nays or abstentions? See none, the motion passed. Uh, thank you. So the uh, next item would be uh, the resolutions. And so the first item is 2021 dash. 144, this is resolution adopting negative declaration for local law, uh, um, I'm not sure what the number is, of the year 2021 entitled amending uses under the zoning code in the conservation commercial district and conservation office park district. Uh, and then we have the second one concerning the amendment. You know, Barbara, Roberti, would you come up and, uh, you know, give a summary, a review for the board of what really is involved you know, here and what we're looking at. And then I'll ask for uh, Jim Horan's comments as our legal advisor. So on the conservation uh, office park, that there's three buildings at this particular site. There are only two COP zones in the town. One is the Fairchild site off of New Hackensack and All Angels. That one is not built on. 
This particular piece has three buildings. This is the rear building that's been empty for quite some time, and they're looking to use it for indoor storage. It won't affect the area. There's even a traffic light on to Myers, so it wouldn't even affect traffic to the point there would be a signal there to keep people from trying to jut out. On the other one in the CC zone, that's a single family home that was changed to uh, from residential R20 to CC, and now the gentleman that was just, Mr. Farley, is looking to sell it as residential. He did come in for a rezone, and then everyone talked about possibly just doing the text amendment, which is where we are. There's 92 acres of vacant land in the CC zone. A lot of that land is not usable as it's in wetlands uh, or flood zones, et cetera, down especially on the 9D cor corridor. Uh, so other than those parcels, and I think there's like seven or eight of them that are vacant, all the others have been developed at this point. So that's what we're proposing. So how many parcels are there altogether? Altogether? Yeah, it, it covered by these two. 26, right? 20, yeah, it's about 26. So there's 26 in the CC zone and okay. two in the COP. What was the uh, zoning of the property on Myers Corners Road in Losey prior to the rezone? R20. And how, how large is that property? 1.22 acres. So of the other one, two, three, four, five, there's like seven or eight parcels that are empty. Three of them are on 9D. One in particular is 6.5 acres, and it's been for sale for some time. It's almost entirely in a flood zone, and it has Army Corps and DEC wetlands on it, which we put 100 foot around, so it would be very hard to develop it for much of anything. Some of the other ones are, are vacant, and they may even be owned by Central Hudson, has a bunch of them over there. The place that has the most vacant land that's vacant is on uh, 376, some of it's landlocked. Con Edison has a huge easement running through them as well. And everything else is either taken or utility right of ways. Okay. What was the uh, methodology by which we uh, discussed going to the text amendment versus the rezone on the property on Myers Corners Road? So when they asked for rezone to go back to residential, there was the thought that we didn't want to come back and forth. So if they try to sell it, and it is on a very busy corridor and on a corner, that there's, there was the potential for somebody to come back and ask for it to be rezoned to commercial again. That would still require an action by this board. Yes. Right. It's so we can. It's surrounded on both sides. Across the street is shopping center district, and behind it is shopping center district. So this this property, and then the property immediately to the west, um, which is basic, is all that. Those properties were zoned residential um, because of the wetlands, and then um, they were identified as CC because they, if you were going to go to a commercial use, that would be the most logical commercial use. They were never put in the shopping center district. So, most, as Barbara noted, most of the properties in the CC district along 9D are currently developed. There are auto body shops. There's a um, Donuts. There's a Dunkin' Donuts, um, and then there's a whole bunch of utility right of way. A gas station. So, and a gas station, tire store. Um, deli. There's a new deli, new deli. there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's then, a parcel next to that for sale. Right, and then there's also um, uh, two single family resident, very small residential properties. Um, one at Stony Kill, 11 Stony Kill, and then one that's basically between what, the gas station and the tire store. Right, that's, I think that's all in a DC wetland. And the piece next to the deli that was Stewart's, mm -hmm. that they try to develop as mm -hmm. a small office building. Mm -hmm. And there's so much wetlands behind it, the septic would be on the only little dry piece away in the back. They'd have to actually cross the DEC wetland to get to it. And then it was proposed as a gas station. And now just the foundation sits there. but. The very front is the only part of that that's usable. The rest of it is DEC wetlands. So, so originally we came forward, we had three properties we were looking at, right? We're looking at the Laredal building, we're looking at the castle, and we're looking at 26 Myers. And 
to rezone those, and I think that's something we ought to consider, just to rezone those three properties. I, I don't understand why all of a sudden now we're doing a blanket or going to rezone all these properties. 92 well, acres we're not here. rezoning them. They're staying in the zone that they are in. We're just adding tax amendments in those zones. But why do we have that tax amendment? Why can't we have them come forward to either to the zoning or planning boards individually? That would be spot zoning. So isn't that what we did to get it from commercial to, I mean, residential to commercial? Say again. Isn't that what was done to get it to yeah. commercial? More or less. I mean, the issue, though, is that, frankly, the, the, the original residential designation didn't make sense for that property since it was on Myers Corners and was totally surrounded by So, but I'm just saying it well, was residential. Hold on. That, that's your opinion. It was uh, residential. That, that's your I have a pre-existing non-conforming at 16 Myers Corners Road that's in a shopping center district. So, so then my question was, it was residential and we moved it to commercial. It was R20, yeah. So my, my position, in my opinion, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? 26 Myers needs to go back to R20, all right? Uh, that's, that is uh, clear to me, right. okay? Uh, the other situations I understand are a little more complicated because we need to try to allow specific uses on existing mm -hmm. properties. This is a no-brainer in my opinion. And I understand what you're saying. Riverbend wasn't there. Riverbend East wasn't there right. eight years ago. I understand what you're saying. However, uh, the way I'm looking at this property right now, and I stopped and looked at it for a little while the other day, and yes, there's a large driveway that looks like a parking lot. I get that. But I believe that this beautiful Victorian style home should revert back to residential and that's that's how I'm going to vote on this I think there should be a specific rezone for that particular property and listen if anybody has a problem with that approach we are adapting to the post COVID time here we made this change previously because we ex examined the scenario that was going on he came before us uh, eight or whatever years ago uh, and was going to have a low impact business uh, in that in that particular uh, structure, what a lot of people don't remember is what that structure looked like before <laughs> this gentleman invested in it. Exactly. And I was there. There was an arson attempt on that house, exactly. which I investigated as a fire investigator. Yeah, so I remember that. Yeah. You got to look at these things globally. He's done an amazing job improving the property, landscaping the property. It's a beautiful building. Uh, I, I agree with his approach relative to the market now uh, post COVID. Uh, it's unfortunate that his business uh, now has shifted, but my position as the councilman that represents that area uh, is that that should be sh separate and distinct. Uh, however we do that, it needs to be rezoned back to R20. I agree. I don't think any of us have an issue with that no. one, Bill. And I don't think I have an issue, I don't know about the rest of the board, for the other two properties, the Lair at all right. Right. And, and the, the castle. castle. Well, the castle um, right now is not it's subject not on the to the table. This. Yeah, it's not here. But we discussed it. We yes. talked about it last time, though. Right, yeah. and that was... So I, not, I don't think any of us had any issues with those no. three. I think so it's looking the, at the, the rest of The 167 Myers Corners Road <coughs> property, which is the rear structure that's vacant, that we're trying to right. do our best here to accommodate a, a potential <laughs> use for, Correct. which in my opinion is low impact, zero visual distraction. It's an internal storage unit. I'd rather have one there than have a U-Haul store on Route 9. Okay, uh, is there a way we can approach these objectives uh, individually? And I, I understand somebody will call it spot zoning or whatnot, but I do think this warrants us looking at these specific properties uh, individually if we can. And, and I agree, that's what I want to do. Well, I agree. The, the one issue which is, deals with CC is that nothing's really been developed in CC since it's been implemented. Okay, then maybe we need to take a broader look at it then. Right. And that's, and, and that's basically that's what we're one doing. of the reasons is that on the you know, the, in order to get those get the CC properties to have some useful life, the only the only option realistically was to go with an, a less in, less intensive um, residential use. Now, under the CC zone, the minimum lot size is one acre. Not R20. R20 right. would be four, four per acre right. or two per acre. The only reason why I'm saying R20 is because that's what it was previously. Right. Correct. So, I understand I mean, that. So here on the CC zone, the minimum lot size is one acre. And then again, that's, that's net. So you take all the wetlands out, and of the 92 vacant acres, you might be able to get 30 or 
30 houses, you know, with, or so. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, most of, the, most of these properties are wetlands. The only real, realistically, the only properties, as Barbara mentioned, are the properties on Route 376 south, between, south of the castle, between the castle and the creek. Um, those are the only, and again, you know, those properties could be developed um, as, you know, as a commercial use. I, they don't seem to be marketed, and but we're not sure why, but. Jim, know. is there though a way that we can address 26 Myers and the Lairdale complex tonight? Yeah. Not as tonight. those, yeah, that's you what I figured. Draft the local law. And we'll have to have a new uh, public meeting in order to do that, correct? Well, no, you could just, we adjourn the public hearing. No, that was, okay. it terminated before, right? We okay. did was table these resolutions. Right. So you would, uh, we would amend it and then republish. So, I mean, you can split off the COP zone. Um, you know, I, I would do them as two separate. So that doesn't help Mr. Farley with no. the sale. Not tonight. No, but we, and, and listen, I'm sure he understands that we have to approach this the, the right way. Now, uh, I believe at the time that was rezoned, I believe the, neighbor, the neighboring property was also R20. I think there were two properties that were rezoned. Is that correct? I don't remember, but the property behind him on Lotsey is almost entirely in wetlands, so it really can't be developed. So, Well, the reason right. why I think we went CC on this previously is because CC was adjacent to that parcel. Because no, the Central CC. Hudson right-of-way goes right through. I'm looking at it right here. The Central Hudson right-of-way was in the CC zone, which is behind his property. The CC zone goes from the Chase Bank. Yes. Right, east. All the way down. So and, and correction to right. what I said before, that 16 Myers Corners uh, pre-existing non-conforming is actually in a highway business district. It's not in the shopping center district based on this map. So my point is that's pre-existing. It's in a commercial <coughs> district, okay? This, in my opinion, needs to be adjoined to the existing residential zone again uh, as one parcel. I think the map that I have here may not reflect that change though, and I don't know if yours, yeah. See that, that, that map that you have right there shows it as a residential parcel. Yeah, because that's, this was not changed. So that's, in my opinion, what I think needs to, to happen on that. It needs to go back to what it was previously. And what is required to make that happen again, Jim? We need to have another public hearing and we need to redraft. We have to redraft, the, we have to defeat these resolutions tonight then redraft and have another public hearing. We don't have to do, I mean, defeat them. Wow. Permanently capable. Well. I prefer to. Yeah, well, I, 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 think we I think we start over clean, Jim. Just I don't yeah. start over. Mm -hmm. And take care of the two properties we need to take care of tonight and then address the rest of the, the issues here because we're talking about some, some big properties here. One's got 49 acres. Yeah. Another's got 34 acres. has got 20 acres. I mean, it's, there's substantial properties. And what do you do uh, relative to the 167 40, miles? The 49 acre property is a church. Okay. Still That's 49 the acres. Just a little precedent and history on the COP with the Laravel property and I believe it was 2006 we did the text amendment to add catalog showroom as a use for Laravel. If you remember yeah. the time the business burned down in the November. So there's a precedent to do that and it's an appropriate use of that. So if you were to come back with a new bill and lay it on the desk to move Laravel, add that additional yeah. warehouse, you can right. specifically right. with the COP and then Gentleman's home here, that was direct buy, right? Wasn't that when direct buy had to relocate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So direct buy had to relocate. We had to accommodate. Right. Yes, we. I was there too. We were there. <laughs> so again, that was another. That's a good example. So we had to accommodate a town, an existing town business within that. So it has been done uh, previously. Yeah, and warehouse is already permitted in the zone. Right, it's just the internal well, storage. I, my understanding is right. the warehouse Correct. was always permitted in the zone from the beginning. So. No, it, it, as Bill said, I think it's a storage issue, right? No, no, I'm just, yeah. right. No, I, I mean, understand. a warehouse and a self-storage right. warehouse. But, you know, one way or the other, we right. can't address it tonight. Right. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then do we also, are we also addressing the castle use, or is that a separate thing? That's a separate. That's separate. separate. That's not here tonight. Right. So there was a welder that was planning on moving, right. but he no, hasn't no, done that. And he's not doing that now. Okay. Not yet. Well, we're not sure. 
So there's another proposed use that. Yep. Is but how is that? Is that CC? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm looking at that too. So, okay. Well, then that'll be a separate situation. Right. right. Correct. I'm not even worrying okay. about that. But, but I, I just want to say one thing. You know, uh, Marcy has brought this up twice relative to inadvertent, uh, you know, consequences, and I think that's value. Uh, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, and uh, understand that the strategy that we have been uh, deliberating here uh, has been uh, never uh, in final form. We've been trying to figure out the best way to accommodate businesses in a fluid environment here as we're uh, coming out of COVID. We're still in COVID, but we're coming out of it, hopefully. Um, but I appreciate the input uh, from, from you and the public uh, and Supervisor Ruggiero Gutzler. Perspective is key in these cases. And Barbara. No, Seriously, he said, he said you. Gutzler, <laughs> Supervisor Gutzler. <laughs> no, I, I do appreciate yeah. your work on it. So thank you. Yeah. to take these forms seriously and really spend time doing the analysis and investment in the questions that are asked. So it might be the exactly right thing, as Mr. Beal has pointed out, that things are changing because of COVID, et cetera, mm -hmm. to make some area, to make some changes. But let's think through what the implications are for the traffic and you know, do some modeling. And, and do some what if planning and then and bring that thing to have a form with basically just saying no, there's not going to be any impact doesn't show that kind of thoughtfulness that right. really needs to be done. So, it, you know, it's not that people are against this, it's that we really want to see that investment in planning. So I'm sorry for my lecture, but thank you for your time. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> okay. So the first resolution, which I've already mentioned, 2021-144, uh, do we have a, what I propose? Again, we have a motion and second, and then we can defeat it. So I'll make a motion that we defeat the proposal. Second. Okay. So all in for, favor of voting down the proposal. Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion pass. Just so we make it clear, right, that we're starting from scratch. Yep. Next resolution is 2021-145, resolution adopting local law of the year 2021 entitled Amending Uses Under the Zoning Code in the Conservation Commercial District and Conservation Office Park District. So that one I think follows the same as the right. resolution 144. I think we also make a motion to defeat this and start fresh. A second that. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion pass. So I don't know how, how the minutes would reflect that, though. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. Right. Oh, correct. That's why. Right. That's why I said it like follows steps. Double negation going on there for a second. <laughs> That's why I said it follows the first one. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and the next item is resolution introducing local law number like of 2021, which would amend chapter 240 zoning, chapter 210 solid waste, littering, and storage of garbage, and chapter 217 subdivision of land of the town code with respect to a variety of matters. And basically, Jim, this is just scheduling a public hearing, correct? I don't know. What's the date of it? So Barbara. is to do a little housekeeping and primarily to change our lighting code in relationship right. to planning board projects. There are minor things such as changing 24055G that farm animals need to be enclosed with fencing to keep them from pretty much leaving the properties. I'm having a lot of trouble with chickens that are in other people's yards and they're not happy about it. Uh, outdoor storage really refers, which is uh, 24036.4, which tells basically the garbage can issues where people leave them for a week at a time, they have to bring them in. 24023 is long and it's about lighting. Our lighting code has not been specific and the planning board would like to reduce some of the very sharp and glaring lights uh, that are not only on our major corridors but for projects coming in. Well, in fact, on that one, we've discovered that uh, since we have no 
code regulating it, Central Hudson can go in and actually replace Free fixtures, replacement. light bulbs, everything without our acknowledgement, which is causing some issues with respect to glare. But they still get the charges for it, right? <laughs> under 24030B, under accessory structures such as garages and big sheds, we had a 600 foot maximum and then they had to go to the planning board. This allows anything over 40,000 square feet to go up to 1,200 square feet. These are much bigger lots. Uh, and then it just graduates uh, for acreage. Uh, it goes from 800 square feet on one acre lots, 900 square feet on two acre lots, uh, three acres, four acres, five acres, up to 1,200 square feet. So we have a lot of people that own multiple acres just to put in their tractors and items for the size of the property. We're just trying to be a little bit more considerate for the needs of the large lots. 24096 uh, I is about electric charging stations for cars. This is where we're going in the future. The building department has developed two new permits, one for residential and one for commercial, because there's a big need, not only you know, privately with Teslas and other companies that have electric cars, but even the car dealerships now right. are wanting to put them in. Uh, and then under 24021F, it's about retaining walls uh, and fences. So we've had an issue with fences. In the town, we don't require a building permit. But a lot of people have been putting six-foot fences in close to the road. They're blocking sight distance. So we're going to reduce, if this gets passed, the front yards not exceed four feet. And corner lots are a problem. They, they have to keep sight distance. So that's something we would work with the resident if they are on a corner. 210-14C uh, under solid waste is again about the receptacles, where they're stored and how long. 21725 is about site easements that they have to be clear and free of anything that would obstruct it. There's, we have site easements and we have to make sure that they stay clear. Uh, we took out open burning. We're working on that with the DEC. We'll revisit that at another time. So those are the only changes in the code. And again, most of them are minor housekeeping with lighting being the one big one. Thanks, Barbara. Okay. Yep. So again, the red purpose of the resolution is to set the public hearing date. When is that, December 13th? Jim? Yes. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? If not, or do I have a, a motion? Just a question. Okay. With regard to the electric charging stations for vehicles, is that for commercial use or is that for residential use? What you're reading there would be for commercial, like when we're doing site plans in the future, we need, like almost like handicap spots, we make sure they put at least, however the scale works out with the amount of parking, the right amount of charging stations. Okay. So you're, you're going to require them to do that or allow them to do that? Uh, I think we're going to, to have to make them put at least the infrastructure in. This is a problem that's going to get larger with all the electric cars. People pull in to do the shopping. They're going to want to charge their cars. Any other comments? All right, I'll take a look okay. at it. You have a motion? We're, we're setting the public hearing? Is that yes, right? that's where we are, December 13th. So this is just the motion to right. set the public set hearing? The public hearing. Yeah. Right. So I'll make that motion then. Okay. The motion is a second. Second. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. Thank you. Uh, the next item, two items in the agenda, the resolutions 2021-147 and 2021-148 uh, are addressing uh, the cannabis law and the requirements that the municipality has imposed on it by you know, state law. Jim, why don't you summarize the opt-out uh, issues? So um, New York um, recently uh, created a new um, chapter in the law called the, the, the Cannabis Law, um, which uh, regulates, um, in this case, um, med all forms of marijuana. Um, it permits uh, recreational use of marijuana. Um, and it establishes a, a cannabis control board 
um, which would issue licenses for um, basically all phases of distribution of cannabis, similar to what the State Liquor Authority does for um, liquor. Um, in this case, um, the cannabis law permits um, local municipalities to opt out, cities, towns, and villages um, to opt out of licensing um, on-site cannabis um, facilities, which would be um, sort of like a hookah, hookah bar. Um, the regulations right now are not uh, are not out. Um, they haven't been developed, and, and that's really one of the reasons why, um, at this point in time, it would make sense for the town to opt out until um, there's a better handle on what the regulations would ultimately look like. Um, because the, f the way the law is drafted, if a municipality does not Correct. opt out by December, does not adopt a local law opting out by December 31st, um, it automatically opts in. Right. Um, oh. By virtue of the fact that the town would enact a law opting out, it could, in the future, opt, opt in if in. it so chooses. Um, so the two um, two facilities that can be um, subject to opt out in municipalities would be on site consumption and retail sales. They use the term dispensary, um, but it's a it's a retail sales um, that's again distinguished from medical marijuana dispensaries. So a medical marijuana dispensary, the town right now does not really, does not, based on this law, does not have the um, ability to regulate. The town cannot regulate the growing of marijuana. The town cannot regulate um, the um, distribution facilities. So if someone was to, to create a warehouse here and it would be licensed by the state, um, that would be subject to zoning, but the town could not prohibit it. Um, so basically the, the, the only two things that um, the law um, permits from restricting are um, on-site cannabis consumption and retail dispensaries. Um, the law also permits um, personal growing of marijuana, smoking of marijuana in public places, where smoking is otherwise permitted. Um, and uh, so um, one of the things that um, on the flip side is there is a, there is a revenue component. Um, there is taxes uh, that are associated, sales taxes that are associated with retail sales and on-premises consumption. Um, the town would then get a, a portion of those sales uh, should it not opt out. Um, the law here is, um, these two laws we've introduced, um, there's two laws here. One is for on-site cannabis consumption opt-out, a second one for um, retail sale, retail, retail dispensary um, opt-out. So they're two separate laws so that they could be considered separately, um, like if we had put COP and CC on two separate laws, we could have adopted something tonight. But um, these are considered separately. Um, they're also subject to permissive referendum. So after the law has been adopted by the town board, uh, residents, um, and it doesn't actually even have to, the residents have to sign it, but residents do not have to circulate the petition. So there is an ability for um, a petition to be filed um, to, have a, to have a referendum as to whether or not the public wishes to vote on it. Um, and that referendum requires 10% of uh, the total votes cast within the town in the last gubernatorial election. Um, we can find that number out at some point in time. Um, but that's the standard for um, what would be required for a petition on permissive referendum. One of the other things regarding the, the citing of these, um, the law provides that, um, that the state will um, have a cap, an overall cap on the number of establishments, which may go up or down. Um, and the law 
prioritizes um, giving um, licenses to communities that have um, social justice impacts related to um, drug uses, drug use. So um, in, in all likelihood, um, the um, dispensaries, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, under the law seem to be um, slated to be in um, more economically disadvantaged communities first, um, based on the way the law is structured. Um, but um, that's the way the law is structured. So, you know, we, even if the town didn't act out, um, opt out, it's unknown how long it would be um, before a dispens dispensary or facility would be licensed by the state in the town of Wadhamter. Um, so, again, you know, if somebody wanted to go into a municipality, they would file an application, assuming much like a liquor license application, um, and, you know, it would be reviewed by uh, the state uh, cannabis control board. So the board is still in the process of being, it's been formed, people have been appointed to it, it's in the process of establishing regulations, which probably will not come into play sometime to the late, later part of 2022, um, in all likelihood. So um, how soon the, the dispensaries and um, you know, the other licenses go out, um, it's unclear. But you know, that's, so um, again, this is um, the two laws are to set a public hearing at the uh, December 15th? 13th. 13th meeting um, to consider these and again, it'd have to be adopted uh, before the end of the year. December. No. Thank you, Jim, for your good summary. So the first resolution, as Jim said, is to set the public hearing date for resolution 2021-147. This is a resolution introducing uh, local law, uh, a local law adopted pursuant to cannabis law one, section 131, opting out of licensing and establishing on-site cannabis consumption premises within the town of Wappinger outside of any village. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. The next item is resolution 2021-148, resolution introducing local law, quote, a local law adopted pursuant to cannabis law section 131, opting out of licensing and establishing cannabis retail dispensaries within the town of Wappinger outside of any village. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Okay. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. So again, public hearing will be held in these two resolutions on December 13th. Just a couple questions, uh, if I may. Uh, Jim, uh, adult use is defined as what age? I believe it's 21. Um, I can look it up. If we have a pre-existing medical cannabis uh, facility in our town, uh, does that particular pre-existing location have the ability to change their business model if we don't opt out to offer recreational marijuana? If we do opt out or don't opt out? If we don't, if we, if we take no action. If that would, yes, they would have the ability, I would think they would have the ability, anyone would have the ability if we don't opt out. Right, so if we have a pre-existing uh, medical cannabis, uh, I'm not gonna say dispensary, because I don't have a problem with medical cannabis, but uh, if we take no action, uh, that particular business, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, could uh, then offer uh, components of recreational cannabis. That's right. Without, assuming, assuming they get licensed by the county. Right, county without, without having to come back to the town, is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, the only thing is if we did not opt out, um, we have the ability to, um, similar to an adult use, we would have the ability to um, create zoning um, for um, you know these cannabis uses within the town. But if you have a pre-existing yeah, right. location, that would be my question. Uh, and 
you know, a number of years ago, uh, and I, I know the business name has changed. I'm not going to say the business name, but we had a, a frank conversation here with a representative from the medical cannabis uh, location uh, in our town, uh, outside the village, and uh, the individual stated that they were uh, open to changing their business model to facilitate recreational marijuana. And uh, it's been documented that uh, that particular business at the time uh, was exploring those options. So my point here is, uh, yes, zoning can be a component down the road for future uh, applicants coming in, but my concern would be pre-existing entities within the town. My other well, question theoretically would you could Theoretically, you can zone anything out of existence, provided that you provide an am what's called an amortization period. So in right. this case here, I don't think an am 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 amortization period would be required as it's not in that use presently. Okay. So for example, the town has zoned out junkyard but it did not do it with an amortization period for the existing junkyards in the town. But the, 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 um, the cases on point deal with um, the city of Buffalo zoning out junkyards. And so a municipality may always zone out an existing use provided that it provides a reasonable amortization period for the owner of the property to make back what it's invested in that property. And here, arguably, they've never they've never used that property as a medical, as a recreational marijuana. Right. So I think if you prohibit it in that particular location, I don't think they have a right to adopt it. Okay, then Certainly my- bring litigation, but- I understand, I'm, I'm just trying to prevent that. <coughs> my other, uh, you know, this is uncharted territory, obviously, it's a new, a new thing, but there's a number of vape shops that uh, perhaps would want to expand into the medical, or correction, into the uh, recreational marijuana market. So uh, I personally believe that there is a very definitive difference between medical marijuana and recreational marijuana. That's my personal opinion. Uh, I don't have an issue personally if people choose to utilize uh, recreational marijuana uh, in the uh, comfort of their own home or on their property. I get that. Uh, but I think that we really have to look at this very informative document from the Association of Towns that breaks this down at the pros and cons as we move forward on this uh, and, and really, I'll even say risk versus reward in some cases um, because we do have a village uh, in our town Correct. that uh, uh, has a number of locations that uh, could be also prime uh, for this type of uh, business too. And I think we as a town uh, need to uh, decide if, uh, if, if, if the village center is going to focus on that, that's fine, but do we want to uh, have uh, the ability for the entire town and the village to, uh, uh, to operate in that capacity? So I'm going to be really taking a, a good look at these, uh, this information we have here that I appreciate whoever put this in here, uh, the town clerk or the supervisor, um, and, and the I town think, attorney. and the town attorney, <laughs> um, because it really breaks down uh, the pros, cons, and it specifically talks about town outside village, village, and the right. revenue sharing thing, and right. you know. That's very complicated, almost, somewhat complicated. But. Right, so I think that we have to look at that and understand, uh, you know, is, is there value in revenue sharing that uh, uh, we don't even know what that dollar amount would be? Well, I mean, that's one thing, and then the other issue is that in municipalities, particularly in Massachusetts, um, where they've had a limited number of licenses that have been issued, um, the licensed establishments have had lines around the block, parking issues, they've had to get um, police to direct traffic um, in and out of parking lots, um, because that's one of the things that, you know, is a concern at least very early on. And one of the other reasons why you may want to, a municipality might want to opt out at the Beginning, and then after things have progressed a while, um, then get into play. But what, what ultimately, you know, at the very beginning, um, the first um, uses, the first, you know, establishments that are authorized um, get a lot of traffic. There's a lot of foot traffic. There's a lot of, you know, business traffic. And again, the law 
Um, as is noted in the packet, there is distances between schools, distances between house and worship, things like that. There's, there's really not much in there regarding distances from residences, right? Um, because of you know, com com uh, of um, you know, these are permitted in dense cities, so right. you can't really have residential. I mean, right. we could do that in our zoning, but. Um, Again, that's that's not in the state in the state law. So and the just, zoning would be adopted similar to what we would have for a bar. Um, and again, um, the licenses are issued by the state. Well, the town does not issue even if we if we did not opt if we opted in for lack of a better word, um, the licenses would still be issued by the state. The right. town could make comments as to whether or not they think that that premises would be appropriate or not. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's the state that decides who gets the license. The state's trumps, so to speak. Correct. Doesn't matter what the town. And that's for any any yep. marijuana, any cannabis business. So be that you know, growing, be that um, uh, distribution, um, processing. So if somebody wanted to go out to COP and we permitted it, you know, I mean, that's one of the questions that's up in the air is with respect to processing facilities, can the town regulate that differently than another industrial business? So, you know, there's, there's well, a lot more to come. Let me just conclude with saying that I do believe that there are positive benefits with med medical cannabis, obviously, but I, I also believe that these are two totally separate worlds here that we need to take a look at. And they are. I mean, one of the things with respect to medical cannabis is everybody needs a card. You know, the, the, the person has a medical cannabis card. Right. Prescription. So, pres a script. So it's definitely more heavily regulated. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Okay. Any other comments on that? No. Okay. Very good. We'll move on to our uh, budget you know, discussions. We have two resolutions, but uh, rather than discussing them right now, let's have our discussions with respect to budget items you know, that we'd like to do. Um, we, I know we have uh, but one, oh, well, several related to personnel matters. Correct. I'll you know, yes. discuss that. So uh, maybe we go into executive session for a brief you know, spot and then uh, come back in. Okay. Yeah, I, I would I'd appreciate doing that now. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. We do that now. Right. So, yep. do we need a motion to go to executive session? Second. Okay. Second. Motion and second. Person, uh, personnel matters. Personnel matters. Personnel matters. Yeah. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, motion passed. So, hopefully, we won't be too long. Thanks.